All right. So today we're going to be looking at some kind of different ways to learn English. Okay. Um, and these were inspired by a YouTube video I saw called Learn English Through Story Level One. Um, it features this student named Jenny, and she's trying out all these kind of unusual methods to learn English while she's living in London. Oh, interesting. So was she like taking a specific class or? Yeah. Yeah. She enrolls in this really unique English course. Okay. And it really focuses on like using English in everyday life instead of just hitting the textbooks, you know? Oh, wow. That reminds me of the input hypothesis. Have you heard of that? I think so. Refresh my memory. Basically, it suggests that like being exposed to understandable input is like the key to actually acquiring a language. Right. Yeah. Like actually using it, not just yeah. studying it. Exactly. So in the video, Jenny starts out and she's really struggling even with like basic conversation. Oh, wow. But then she finds this course and she starts learning all this new stuff. One of the first things they talk about is reading. Reading, huh? It's pretty standard. What makes it so special in this case? Well, they stress spending a good chunk of time each day reading at least like 30 minutes. Okay, that makes sense. And it has to be something that's interesting to you. Oh, so no more slogging through boring textbooks. Right, exactly. And yeah. get this, they actually say you shouldn't write down new words. Really? So how are you supposed to learn them? It's all about understanding the word for the context of the sentence, like how it's used naturally. Hmm. So. That's actually really interesting. There's research that shows learning words in context helps you remember them way better. Oh, wow. So it's like osmosis instead of memorization. Exactly. You're building connections between words and how they're actually used. I like that. And then they talk about this technique called shadowing for pronunciation. Oh, shadowing. I love shadowing. Tell me about it. I'm intrigued. So basically you mimic the sounds of a native speaker from like a recording. So you're like copying them? Yeah. It's kind of like how little kids learn language naturally. Makes sense. So does it actually work? Oh, yeah. yeah. It helps you train your mouth muscles to make the right English sounds. It's like giving your tongue a workout. Huh, pretty much. Yeah. And it can even help you get ready for presentations and stuff. That's awesome. Okay, so we've got reading and shadowing. Uh -huh. What else do they have up their sleeve? Well, one of the students in the video, Elizabeth, she shared this technique that really caught my attention. Okay, I'm listening. She calls it thinking aloud. Thinking aloud. So yeah. like talking to yourself. Uh-huh, yeah. It kind of is, but it's really effective. So basically you think in English and then you say those thoughts out loud. So instead of translating in your head, you just speak in English. Exactly. Elizabeth said she started with simple sentences and then made them more complex as she got better. That's really smart. I can see how that would help with fluency. Yeah, it lines up with this idea called the output hypothesis, which basically means producing language even on your own is crucial for learning. So you're creating your own little English world even when you're alone? Precisely. Now, on top of all that, the video recommends spending 40 minutes a day on each of these things. 40 minutes each for reading, listening, shadowing, and speaking. Yeah, they really emphasize putting in the time. That's a lot. But I guess even if you can't do a full 40, the important thing is to be consistent. Absolutely. Even 15, 20 minutes a day can make a huge difference if you do it regularly. It's all about making it a habit. Hmm. So what do you think about all these techniques as an expert? Do you think they would actually work? You know what I really like about them is how they approach language learning from different angles. It's not just about grammar or vocabulary. Yeah, it's like a full body workout for your English. Uh -huh. Exactly. But you have to remember, motivation and consistency are super important. You can't just do it once and expect to be fluent. So true. It's like anything else you have to put in the effort. Exactly. It's a journey, not a sprint. I guess I'm just wondering how these techniques would work for different levels of learners. Like what works for a beginner might not work for someone who's more advanced, right? Yeah, that's a really good point. We should definitely talk about that. And I'm also curious about like personalizing these techniques. Mm -hmm. Like how can people make them work for their own learning style and goals? Those are all great questions and we're going to dig into those next. Awesome. I can't wait. So we were talking about how these techniques might work differently for different levels of learners. Right. Like what works for a beginner might not be as effective for someone more advanced. Exactly. So let's break that down a bit. Where would you suggest someone starts if they're brand new to learning English? Well, for beginners, I think that effective reading with a dictionary nearby is a really solid foundation. Yeah, that makes sense. It helps them build up their vocabulary and get comfortable with basic sentence structures. Right. But what about speaking I know a lot of beginners are hesitant to actually speak out loud. I hear your shadowing can be really helpful for that. Oh, yeah, because you're not actually having a conversation. You're just mimicking. Exactly. It takes the pressure off. Plus, it's great for pronunciation practice. That makes sense. 
So what kind of materials would you recommend for shadowing at the beginner level? I'd say start with simple audio recordings with clear pronunciation, like maybe some children's stories or slow paced podcasts. Okay, cool. So as learners progress, do you think the thinking aloud technique becomes more important? Definitely. It really challenges them to think and express themselves spontaneously in English. And you can always make it more difficult as you go. Exactly. Instead of just narrating your day, you could try summarizing a news article or even having a debate with yourself in your head. Whoa, that's next level. Yeah. I like it. But I guess the techniques are only part of the equation, right? Right. What do you mean? Well, motivation and consistency seem like they play a huge role, too. Oh, absolutely. You can know all the best techniques in the world, but if you don't actually use them, it won't matter. Like any skill practice makes perfect. Exactly. And it's not always easy to stay motivated, especially when you hit a plateau or feel discouraged. I know how that feels. <laughs> it can be really tough. Yes, totally. Yeah. So I think setting realistic goals is important. Yeah, and finding ways to make learning fun. Exactly. If you're not enjoying it, you're less likely to stick with it. Makes sense. So are there any resources you recommend for staying motivated and finding fun ways to practice? Oh, tons. There are so many great resources out there. Like what? Well, for vocabulary, there are these spaced repetition systems like Anki and Memrise. I've heard of those. They use algorithms to help you remember words better. Cool. And what about for listening and speaking practice? Podcasts and YouTube channels are amazing for that, especially ones designed for English language learners. Oh, yeah. There's so much good stuff out there. And you can learn about all sorts of interesting topics, too. Exactly. And don't forget about authentic materials like movies, TV shows, and music. Oh, yeah. Immersing yourself in the culture is so important. Even something as simple as changing your phone's language to English can make a difference. Little things like that can really add up. Yeah. And remember... Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Mistakes are part of the process. It's how we learn. Exactly. Don't let them discourage you. Like Jenny in the video, she made plenty of mistakes, but she kept practicing and eventually she got fluent. Her story is a great reminder that there's no one right way to learn a language. It's all about finding what works for you and sticking with it. Exactly. Yeah. And embracing the journey with all its ups and downs. So we've talked about techniques motivation resources. It's been really helpful. But I want to go back to Jenny's story for a second. Okay. What about it? Well, she was living in London, so she was surrounded by English all the time. Right. She had that immersive experience. Exactly. But what about people who can't just pick up and move to an English-speaking country? How can they create that immersion at home? That's the million-dollar question, and it's a really important one. We'll definitely explore that in more detail. Awesome. I can't wait. Okay, so how do we recreate that immersion? Like we were saying, not everyone can just move to England. Right. But you can still surround yourself with English in your everyday life. How? So, like, what are some practical things people can do? Well, for starters, think about all the English language media you consume. Yeah. Movies, TV shows, music podcasts. Yeah, those are easy to come by. Exactly. And they're a fun way to absorb authentic language and culture. It's like bringing a little piece of that English-speaking world to you. Right. And with streaming services, you have access to so much content. I know I've been watching this British comedy show and I'm picking up all these new phrases and slang. That's great. It all helps. And while we're on the topic of different mediums, don't forget about reading. Oh, yeah. Good old books. It's a classic for a reason. Reading exposes you to more complex grammar and vocabulary. And you can really get lost in a good story. Exactly. And these days, with ebooks and audiobooks, it's easier than ever to find something you enjoy. Okay, so reading and listening are great, but what about actually speaking English? That could be tough if you don't have people to practice with. That's true, but have you considered online communities or language exchange platforms? Oh, yeah. Those are great for connecting with other learners and native <laughs> speakers. Exactly. It's like having a conversation partner whenever you want. And you can learn about different cultures, too. Right. And a lot of those platforms offer structured activities and conversation prompts. Oh, cool. That would be helpful for beginners. Definitely. And if you prefer something offline, look for local English-speaking groups or clubs. You never know. There might be some right in your community. It's worth checking out. And even if you can't find a group or a partner, you can always practice on your own. Like with thinking aloud. Exactly. You can narrate your day, talk through a problem, or even practice a presentation. 
I sometimes imagine I'm giving a tour of my city to an English speaker. I love that. The key is to find ways to make it fun and incorporate it into your routine. Even small things like switching your phone's language to English can help. Absolutely. It's all about those little touch points that add up over time. I think we should also mention mindset because that plays a big role too. Oh, definitely. Your mindset is crucial for language learning. It's about being patient with yourself and accepting that it's a journey. Right. It's not a race. There will be times when you feel frustrated or stuck. Yeah, but it's important to keep going and not give up. Exactly. And celebrate those small victories along the way. Each new word you learn, each conversation you have, those are all signs of progress. They really are. So remember to acknowledge and appreciate your growth. So as we wrap up our deep dive into these unconventional English learning techniques, we hope you feel inspired to try some of them out. Find what works best for you. Make it your own. And most importantly, have fun with it. Learning a new language is a journey, and it should be an enjoyable one. Exactly. It's all about exploring and growing and discovering new ways to connect with the world. So keep practicing, keep learning, and keep those minds open. This has been The Deep Dive signing off.